Hey guys, welcome back to Algos Explained. My name is David Kim, and today we're gonna be using a different platform. Today is called Adabit. Um, this one my friend told me about, and I don't think it's as popular, or maybe it is. Maybe I just don't know. But uh, it does have algorithm questions, just like platforms like Code Wars and Lead Code. And so I thought I'd give it a try, uh, see if I can uh, link my videos in the comments and if it gets flagged then obviously I'm going to stop using this platform but if it does hopefully it can help the people that are using this platform so we're going to go ahead and get started with the easy questions and this one that we have today is called largest swap and so what we're going to try to do is write a function that takes a two digit number and determines if it's the largest of two possible digit swaps so okay to illustrate they gave us some examples largest swap is 27 false and 43 true i guess what they're saying is or well it explains right here if 27 is our input we should return false because swapping the digits gives us 72 and 72 is greater than 27. on the other hand swapping the uh, 43 gives us 34 and then that's not greater than so let's go ahead and look at a couple of easy examples here uh, 14 and 53 and 99. so 99 even though we swap it, it is going to be the same, and so we already had the largest, and so I guess that would have been one of the edge cases that I would have asked for. Um, also, they say that it has to be a two-digit number, so I'm going to assume that it is not going to be a single digit, therefore not a zero. Zero would have been one of the other edge cases that I might have asked about in an interview situation. And also, I want to ask about negative numbers, because perhaps... Uh, if it is a negative, then we got to worry about that. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to write our code for positive numbers first, and then if it fails for negatives, then we'll add in that, um, we'll add in those casings just, just for this uh, situation. Uh, at, in an interview situation, you're most likely going to get the interviewer to say either don't worry about negatives or yes, address negatives uh, before you say that you're done with the question. And so... Uh, just quickly taking a look at these ones again 14 is false because it is not the largest it can turn to 41 uh, same with or with 53 that is the largest because if you swap it is 35 and that's no longer greater so let's go ahead and um, okay let's see numbers with two identical digits should yield true okay so that was one of the edge cases all right so other edge cases always with inputs is if it's a number ask if maybe your input might not be a number. You know, is it possible that you get bad inputs like uh, a string or a character or a random symbol or something? Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I think this question is one of the easy ones. It is considered easy. And so um, hmm, I wish the instructions were on the side for us like it is in lead code, but oh well. We have num. And so I think that there there are a lot of ways to do this. We can swap the numbers and compare it. But in reality, all we need to do is just take the first number and um, kind of look at is it greater than the second one or not. Uh, how we're going to do this is we are going to, uh, let's see, if we want to index into the first and second number without having to actually do the swapping action, we need it to be in a string format. And so um, let's change num to num to string. And that will that will allow us to uh, kind of what is it uh, index into it. That's the word I was looking for. And so at the very end, we could just return num of zero. And so that would have been our first digit. Is that greater than or equal to num of the second uh, number right there? And so if this was like a seventy-three. This 7 would have been our 0th index, and this 3 would have been our first index, because indexes go from 0 and onward. And so we were just checking, okay, is this 7 greater than or equal to this next number, 3? And if it is, that means we already had the greatest one. And vice versa, if we had a situation where it was 37, then we would have checked, okay, is this uh, 0? zero index three is that greater than or equal to the seven and if it's not then we're going to return false which also aligns with what we want in terms of is it the greater number or not and so 
it checks out there. Only thing we haven't addressed yet are negatives, but let's go ahead and see if our tests or if our tests fail for that. I have a good feeling that it would, but then, you know, who knows? Okay, it, they did not account for negative numbers. Maybe I should go check back on the instructions and see if they mentioned that the numbers wouldn't be negative. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and get out of this. Okay. Mm, that was easy. And I cannot get out of this. View other solutions. I'm not really interested yet. I want to quickly go back to instructions and see. Write a function that takes a two digit number and determines if it's the largest of the two digit possible digit swaps. Um, I don't think it mentioned anything about negatives. Negative. Yeah, it didn't. And so let's go ahead and you know what? Let's address it anyways. I think that it'd be nice too. Um, because it throws a wrench in our situation where if the number was negative 73, which is technically still a two digit number, now is this the largest number possible? No, it's not. As a matter of fact, if we do swap it, then that would be the larger number because the smaller negative number is the larger number. And so in that case, how do we address it? Um, well, all we need to do is we need to kind of address how we index into these numbers and also um, which conditional we're going to return if depending on whether it is a negative number or not. And so let's go ahead and um, add in a condition to check if it's a negative or not. So if num is less than zero, then we know that it is a negative, else, or actually, you know what, we could just leave it like this. If num is less than zero, then we could address our negative situation. Uh, number is negative. And if it's not, then we can go ahead and follow along with our uh, regular logic. And so if it is negative, then all we have to do is, uh, thank goodness we know that it is going to be still a two digit number and not some three digit number. We have to just check into is number of now what are in, what is our index going to be? It is going to be that's the zeroth index because we turned this whole thing into a string, and so that is going to be our first number. And let me go ahead and double check that and see this. So we are going to put a negative in there, and let's console log num of zero. And I'm hoping that we get a negative sign. Yes, we do. And if we were to index into the first and the second index points, we would we should get negative two four. Okay, exactly what we wanted. So let's go back here and uh, so now we know that we are going to get uh, the first at the zeroth index isn't going to be a negative sign. That doesn't have anything to do with our comparison. And so let's go ahead and start looking at the one and the second index. And let me review this logic here real quick. If the first index is greater than or equal to the second one. And so now that is not true. We want to be looking at our second one first and we want to make sure, okay, or actually, you know what, let's just, uh, yes, okay, let's do it like this. If our second one is, if this guy is greater than or equal to this one, so if this one, okay, I think I'm getting confused. Uh, it has to be, or, well, it doesn't have to be, but let's go ahead and keep it at this, comparing the first and the second, and we want the first one to be less than less than the next one. And then we know we have the greater number. And if that number happened to be a negative number, we already technically, again, we still have the greatest number. And so we want to keep that equal sign in there. And so 
This one shouldn't have uh, changed our solution because first of all, they didn't even care about negative numbers, but um, we're just gonna make sure that it still works and it does. And um, you know, this is a good way to sometimes impress your interviewer. Perhaps it's an easy question like this and maybe if you get a question like this, they're probably going to be ready to give you a second one. But you know, it, it shows that you take care of edge cases and although it technically they technically didn't need it to pass their uh, test, uh, you exceeded the expectation even on an easy question like this and so let's go um, and so I encourage you to always look for edge cases in every single question and like this solve for all of them that you can alright uh, well that's it for this one and uh, thanks for watching and I hope this helped if it did uh, please like this video and subscribe for more videos like this and I'll catch you in the next one bye